Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme of slaying a pet system. To demonstrate this theme I'm going to choose my game in the British Championship round 8. This was the Tuesday after the Monday of my first victory so I was feeling a little better with myself and I was playing Peter Shaw so I knew in advance from the pairings which were given the night before at around 11 o'clock uh, they'll be playing Peter Shaw so how do you slay a pet system? Well, the higher rated players um, who have FIDO ratings usually have games on databases like Chess Live DE, etc. So I looked up Peter Shaw on um, databases, including the master collection of Let's Play Chess.com, Chess Live DE, and I noticed he did actually have a pet system. It was a kind of um, a more uncommon variation of the French, involving the Queen's Bishop being Fincetto'd. And it also played it previously in this tournament. So, I researched this pet system on, on the morning of the game. And I was happy that in the game he actually did play his French defence to start off with. And after d4, he did venture to play his pet, b6. So, on the lead up to this game, the game was at around 2.15. I had done some research actually with Ribka into this and looked for an innovation in his previous loss in this tournament, in this opening. And I did actually find something very interesting. I found that after bishop d3 he played uh, bishop b7 and after knight f3 he plays c5. So apparently the main line move is c3 here. I didn't play the main line. This had been played before in the tournament as well, and he had drawn that game. But uh, a very interesting move is d5. I'm not sure what the current state of theory on this is, or if this could be uh, regarded as an attempt at refutation. But it certainly gave me a very promising position out of the opening. It's a nice pawn gambit. He took on d5, and after ed, he took with his bishop. So what have I got for the pawn here? Well, he's only really developed one piece, his bishop. And also, I can attack that piece. So knight c3, I'm gaining even more development initiative. So the bishop goes to e6. So this he regarded perhaps as an improvement over bishop b7. I played here now bishop f4. And the immediate threat now is knight b5. So all was going as expected. He actually played a6. So this is what I had prepared. And now here comes the novelty. I prepared knight g5, actually with the help of Ribka, on the lead up to this game. So this is around 12 o'clock. Knight g5. The idea is that uh, black's only developed piece has been exchanged off, and it's a light square defender. Let's, let's assume uh, black plays in this position, knight f6. Now this is very interesting. Knight takes e6, f takes e. Here... White can gain an advantage with g4, because g4 uh, was protected previously by that bishop. And I believe this position to be really nice for white, well worth the pawn. So I was really happy to have this position, but he played, I think, the most accurate uh, move here. He played d takes e6. So it's got this cunning idea of perhaps using the rook like this to come out like that. And if he can keep his position quite solid it will be okay. So queen f3 probes that rook on a8, that unprotected piece. So rook a7, and now I just castle queenside. Still, I was very satisfied with the opening here. It's just a lot of pressure. It's difficult for black to even um, continue developing with natural moves. He played actually knight d7, and now I played g4. So my intentions are really to just blast his pawn chain, especially the light squares, blast his light squares. So if I get in g5 and potentially, you know, h4, h5, g6, maybe that's a bit slow. But anyway, probing these light squares could win the game. He played queen a8, which seems a very nice move. But now I play queen h3. So I'm still eyeing his e6 square with a potential for playing g5. He plays now knight d5. So he gets a few forcing moves in. But, I, I humbly retreat the bishop, because I think this is only temporary. These threats are only temporary. He plays now knight takes c3, and I take on c3. 
and I just like my nagging pressure here. And if he's going to castle, he's going to have to play a move like g6 later and weaken his dark squares. But first, he has to chase away this bishop on c3, which is currently pinning that pawn. So he plays b5 with aggressive intentions. So I carry on with g5 now. So potentially I'm threatening g6. He plays now b4. So what I did was again humbly retreat that bishop. I don't mind retreating my bishops as long as they can come back in the game. And he hasn't got a light squared bishop here. So hopefully, after this knight e5, I thought bishop e2. And if I can get back on this diagonal, I'll always have his queen as a tempo gaining resource. So he plays g6 now. And it seems he's solved his problems a little bit. So by kicking that bishop away from c3, he unpins his g-pawn, and now he's going to castle. Well, I thought I can gain pressure here with my bishops. I played bishop f4, and he played uh, bishop g7, and now I played queen e3, so I'm making him go a bit backwards now. And does he really want to play knight c6, going into a pin with bishop f3 against his queen? Not particularly. He played knight d7. I played bishop f3 anyway. And after queen c8... Bishop d6, I've still got a very pleasant position. And asking him, you know, how is he going to castle? Well, he answers that question by, by playing bishop f8. I don't really want to repeat positions here with bishop f4, bishop g7, bishop d6. So actually, I let him castle. Because I think he's going to be a fixed target on the h-file. After bishop g7, I play simply h4. So my crude idea is I'm going to play h5. Bishop e4, queen h3, and mate him. That's the crew plan here. But after castles, I put a little bit of um, detail into that plan. We'll look at some details here. And I think actually bishop d6 is um, accurate to start off with, to, to stop any um, e5s. But also, that's an evacuation square, potentially, f8 for the king. So uh, I play bishop d6, and now he plays rook e8. So I carry on with the crew plan of h5. So I'm simply trying to rip open the h file and get to his king. He plays now a5, which actually is potentially a very good move, because, you know, rook a6 and the threat of the exchange sacrifice, which actually, uh, coming up, would have been a very interesting possibility. After hg, hg, I played bishop, h, bishop e4, so I've got this crude intention now, queen h3, and he played rook a6, I play queen h3, so he has to defend against the mate threat. Now, rook date takes d6 here is a bit dire. It's just giving up the exchange for, and I can win in different ways. I don't have to try and mate him. I can try and mop up his queenside pawns. He plays knight f8. And now I kind of blunder, actually. This is pointed out on um, the Let's Play Chesscom forums. I played f4, and here would be a very nice exchange sacrifice if he had played it. Because this pawn's a bit of a liability on the dark square. The intention was good to play bishop e5, and then the threat would be queen h8 mating, because bishop takes, rook takes h8 mate. That was the intention. It supports the bishop e5. But here, if he had played rook takes d6, rook takes, queen c7, I'm in trouble. For example, queen d3, bishop d4. And what do I do now? I have to sack the exchange back, because say, say something like rook a6, queen takes f4, king king there, queen takes g5, he's got a fine position, or a potentially fine position, it looks to be equal now. But anyway, he didn't play that, he um, kind of blundered now, he played the move e5 here, and this simply gave me the crushing, squeezing move f5, and I don't even really care if he exchanges my queens after f6, because I'll just double rooks and mate him if his bishop's on, on h8. So this was another point where I was really happy. I could see a virtually guaranteed victory here. He took on f5, and after bishop takes f5, I don't even need to try and mate him. After queen d8, he's still got this unprotected rook here now as a liability. So I just picked that up. I played bishop h7. After king h8, I played bishop d3 check, just picking it up and winning. So let's have a quick overview and summary of this game. I prepared this novelty idea of using the pawn sack which had been played previously against him, but this knight g5 coming up. So robbing him of his light squared bishop to put a lot of pressure on the light squares. Just a positional pawn sacrifice really. So um, I had a lot of pressure here and I didn't mind retreating the bishops and I didn't even mind him, you know, 
pressurising with b4 with these knight moves. Because once these bishops were back in the centre, they were quite dominating. And I even let him castle here, not to repeat the position, and to give myself a fixed target. His king was just a fixed target. So I could simply target it now with doubling up on the h-file. A slight inaccuracy with f4 here though. Um, he didn't pick up rook takes d6. He played e5 and that was just the end after f5. So the game continuation was just me picking up the rook on a6. So that gave me my second win in a row and I'm starting to feel really good about myself in this second week of the tournament. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.